Hello and welcome to Cinema Express. Uh, I'm Karthik and today I'm with screenwriter Atika Chauhan. Uh, she has written for films like Waiting, Margaret of the Straw, Chapak, Guilty, and she is also the co-writer for Agra with Kanu Bhel. Uh, the film was recently screened at the Cannes Film Festival. Her upcoming projects are Ulaj, uh, which is a patriotic thriller uh, set around the world of Indian Foreign Services. It stars uh, Janvi Kapoor and also Not, a relationship drama is being produced by British actor Dave Patel. Uh, hi, Atika. Welcome to Cinema Express. Uh, firstly, before I get into your films, your filmography, your work, I want to start off with this post you recently put on Instagram about completing 14 years in Mumbai right. and being confused initially in the city <laughs> of, you know, like 12 coach trains, 15 coach trains, what is the difference, everything. I want to take you back to 2009 when you started uh, in this city. So first year is very crucial for anybody who comes to Bombay. How was it? Like, how was the experience in the first year in Mumbai as a screenwriter? Uh, it really, I mean, it really, as I look back, I, as I recap the entire thing, I mean, I don't know. I I think... I wasn't really uh, thinking too much ahead. And that was the only way one could have done it. I think it was impulsive. I mm. think most of it was slightly rash. There mm. was no money in the bank. And then sometimes you take these risks mm. only when you have very little to lose. And I think I was I was primed to make a gamble like that. Like I was in, at that stage of my life where... I mean, if even if I didn't make it or if I couldn't get through or whatever, like I, I, I really didn't have anything as a fallback. So this, I think I was like in that situation and I moved into a city and an industry and a professional, like I made a career jump. So I was a journalist oh. before that and yeah. then I made a jump and I, I ensured that I burnt pretty much all my bridges. Like I, I there was no fallback, you know, okay. in that sense. And, because, I mean, of course, I would, could have eventually gone back to a journalistic profile again. Huh. But I I wasn't really keen on it. Like, I, I thought I had, like, anyway, journalism was something accidental. It had happened to me in the early years that I spent in Delhi uh, hmm. being the literature student. So I had a very standard, you know, like, uh, Delhi yeah. literature student yeah. kind of like a profile till then mm. and then I had like done something really radical by very very uh, outlandish in that sense by like attempting something like screenwriting because some there was there was only this one thing that was kind of guiding me which is that from ever since I was like very young like maybe six or seven I knew that I wanted to write stories mm. and I had a deep inclination for fiction I used to uh I mean, now I don't read as much. I I can't like because our, all our brains are like at that, and I don't mean to trivialize it, but at some level, we are our brains are imitating ADHD, right? Like it's mm. so difficult to focus. Yeah. Um, but at one point, as a younger, like in my young adulthood, um, I, I mean, I I don't remember doing anything else but reading, mm. and uh, I had like a great deep spiritual uh sort of like. Uh, connection to books and uh, so for me everything else was just a I, I couldn't even identify it I had no vocabulary or tools to say how I will do it there was no program there was nothing I didn't have the means to pursue ex, you know like programs abroad etc so this was the life and I was trying to make some eck out a living uh, in the situations that were possible for me and so of course journalism happened uh, around there, uh, you know this this this. You work for Hindu and CNN. I've been there. Right? I worked. Ah. I I was a freelancer with Hindu, a, a dedicated one. Never okay. really got on the payroll, but okay. I got a lot of work from, and I'm so grateful to that uh, Delhi Hindu team, Metro okay. Metro Plus. Yeah, team, yeah, yeah, yeah. Metro who Plus, gave yeah. me like some twenty articles, you know, like and ah. at that time each article paid five hundred bucks. Uh, Karthik, ah. I'm talking two thousand three, yeah. two thousand four. Okay. Okay. Meant a lot, and yeah. in the process of actually, it was more. I wanted to 
I was writing on art and that's why I continued to like, I was knocking on the door because give me like art shows mm. to cover because that's what I was studying at the moment, at that point, ah. stuff in art history, wanted to become an art critic. Okay. And of course, I did not obviously know where could that lead to, right? Like the, it yeah, was yeah. a very tiny bubble. Ah. It was so difficult to, you know, get inside those small, yes, yes. There, was not, there was massive gatekeeping and I wasn't yeah, fancy yeah. enough. I'm yeah, still yeah. not fancy enough. I'm always like, <laughs> <laughs> not really, never really reaching the moment in time kind of person. So I was like, I'm not going to be a scene. I'm, I'm, I'm literally like an orphan. Uh, I mm. don't have cloud post off. I'm So how will I ever like, who is going to recommend me for like mm. the prime options? And uh, uh, so I, I, and that is not to say that people don't recognize talent. They do. And which yeah. is why was I got the chances that I did get, for hmm. example. But because there are other layers, right, to everything. Yeah. So uh, I was like, "Ye to cross karne mein bahut time lag jayega," hmm. and I was getting impatient. So I only told my editors that "Mujhe kuch to de do taaki main paise kama sakun." So for hmm. me, the idea was to multiply those five hundred checks into yeah. at least a month, and obviously not a, and you because you know how sparsely art is written <laughs> about. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So that was about one story, but the rest would be all about Bollywood. This is ah. how it actually started. It was accidental journalism. So hmm. by the end of it, I would just I would be just sent off to like interview Anil Kapoor, for example. Hmm. <laughs> because and this I'm talking about Delhi. And so yeah. with a cut to we I reached a point within a year where I suddenly had like 20 like byline on 20 hmm. small articles where I've covered culture and art and all of that and it's funny because my entire pursuit was mostly about either writing about art so that I could actually further my career in academia like hmm. so it, it this was an accidental byproduct of the just that hustle hmm. and um, then the it just happened that CNN Ivan was launching and I just happened to know that they're like looking at like you know recruiting people and I was just there and mm. I, I thought I'm going to write on art, but they were like, we have an opening in this department. So now mm. once I was at, at that organization, I met this wonderful mentor. Her name is Ritu Kapoor. She now runs yeah. Quint. And yeah, yeah. Uh, this was a game changer for me. Like the, I, 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 this is the first time I'm getting an opportunity to like say this out loud in an interview that she, the, the, like she literally picked me from yeah. a bunch of people. She identified something in me. She showed me something that I had, which I did not know. Huh. And uh, she made me believe in myself. And she said, you have like a natural flair for audio video. And mm. I had, I was a mass com graduate. I, I wasn't, I was like just like this nerd who would just like chew books, mm. you know? And yeah. and so, so this was something where I would not, not really know sometimes how to believe what she's saying i had like zero confidence and i have i've consistently like this is the for i'm 40 so for 40 years i've felt like an imposter or like i'm see i feel i don't belong here and mm. that could be that's a, obviously a psychological condition yeah. because yeah. it comes from somewhere else but it's even though i now I have i can pay for expensive therapy and understand what it is and where it emanates yeah. from yeah. i still can't i can't rewire it right like i can I can get get to the source of the wiring, and ah. maybe perhaps twenty years or forty years down the line, I may 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 shift, may see a shift. But it can't be, it can't be a very significant or definite cognitive shift in hmm. the timeline that you are stuck in now. So we here we are. We I am this person. My boss takes keen interest on in me and like becomes my mentor and like helps me find something. So she gives me more opportunities, which take that. Uh, talent forward. And, so you were uh, doing like video interviews and stuff. Are you saying that? I, like was, I was more like I I did I covered I obviously interviewed a lot of uh, artists and mm -hmm. authors and other people. But for me, I think the the thing that I developed as a skill. I don't know how good I was at it, but I developed a skill for like putting uh, making boring stories really interesting visually oh. for a format okay. like a 
weekend magazine program for for yeah. that time you know tv journalism yeah. was slightly more like it was more quality qualitative back then so yeah. we we had to like obviously think of more innovative ways of like what can we do with authors how can we shoot them etc like i remember having this really amazing interview with sarnath banerji and i was such mm. a big fan <laughs> and i had to go shoot him and he was like this he was at the launch of his book and so i had to find a way to to and he was like obviously mobbed by journalists but yeah. I, I remember having this solid moment in time like asking him those kind of questions where I actually had his attention for like 15 minutes mm. so those were the little, like as a, I mean you would understand what I'm talking yeah. about so those, yeah. those little achievements of 23, 24, 20 this was 23, 25 mm. and then it reached a point where it, it, that also you cyclically do right and then you realize that okay abhi ye ki cheez hai ye aage isko aur hmm. badhna hai hmm. and then um, uh, I, it's just like also the now as i look back a happenstance of like that's hoshia by the way <laughs> hi hoshia <laughs> you have two cats uh, i like... have two cats yeah, Piki and hoshia and they're in double role because they're both gingers okay. so uh, it just it's just it's a test of like your observation like if you're able to point one from yes <laughs> So, yeah. but that's Hoshiar. He's always uh, perching on on my shoulder, <laughs> like looking over yeah. my shoulder, literally. So yeah, so uh, this is basically a happenstance of like also uh, reaching a point in my career uh, where there was extreme, uh, like the, this feeling of extreme. Uh, like I, I knew I I wanted to do something else. Okay. And uh, it wasn't journalism for sure. Yeah. And uh, was it because I, like you were not able to express yourself creatively? Was it something like that? I just thought I had my problem was there was I think it was also somewhere conflated with my personal life, and I had by I thought I'd lived a very con like a very deep, um, and rich and eventful personal life by the time I was already twenty five or twenty seven. Okay. Um, I mean, of course, it, there were the micro way to look at it is that, yeah, of course, as a child, if you're like born in a dense, dysfunctional setup, and then, of course, you have these crazy experiences with your family. Uh, and then, I mean, I, 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 I mean, I eloped from my house mm. at 21. I mm. married my college senior. Uh, and so there was, a, there was these interesting things that happened in my life, which were like, uh, the stuff of novels already mm, mm. and so by i'm 20 i was 25 or between 25 or 26 i remember i was hitting my first divorce and mm. uh, i remember i went to work one day in fact my one of my other seniors at work was like what's up with her face why is she looking drained like that and someone said oh she's getting divorced and she was like oh was she even married like this child and uh, this is crazy things uh, that that were happening in my life so all of this conflated in a way where it was just time to leave Delhi it was time to like say no to everything that had happened before this and it was just time to like go out and do something really wild like for example it was really that moment where you're like my greatest fear is that I'm not a writer hmm. and and in that moment, you're like, well, so what? Even if you aren't, like, give, let's give it a shot. Right. And like, so with that hope, you just like, you come, you, I, I mean, plan B and plan A was pretty similar that I had to come to Bombay to figure, like, even if it means like just working as an AD or like getting into some set or like figuring this industry for a while. Uh, and I would be obviously living like a struggler. I like figured how, how I could be the fifth flatmate in someone else's, uh, but you know, uh, you know what I'm I'm curious about how did you zero on on screenwriting because you were interested in fiction so you could have gone the fiction way also you could have tried to become a yeah so I author. think that transition happened when I went to CNI again and I was okay. doing video stories and my mentor was a filmmaker okay. and so for me I think I may have because I just like looked at it like oh I'm I don't know how I'm able to do this hmm. I I am not myself able to actually. Acad academically analyze this how am I mm. able to do this but I'm, I have a natural flair of doing this I'm able okay. to uh, do the screenplay mm. uh, very well without knowing that I'm doing the screenplay mm. uh, so I was doing it for uh, obviously 
different formats like other formats outside of film but i i realized like i more than even if i'm doing i let's say let's let's not even talk about how good i was at it hmm. let's just say i was enjoying it a lot okay yeah uh, so for me it became like a thing that i i must do this for a while for me to know maybe hmm. there is something in it and of course there was that petata of stories inside me hmm. and that was also like like literally like pushing me to like take that chance and then it found that moment in my life where there was there was, i had every reason to leave delhi like hmm. every good reason delhi it it was a city failed me did you like and, delhi um, generally like or did you always no, find I, it I, very I, violent I, and no i i i hate it i've often spoken <laughs> about it like it's in that sense it's like my uh, negative muse like in the yeah. sense that i think everything that i write about uh my voice is set against the experiences yes. that i had yeah and it's literally so in that sense it is a very important experience yeah. uh and it's it's literally like capturing something that's maybe happening in other places in the world obviously it happens mm. everywhere but it i experienced it through that bubble mm. yeah so that time and space became very important for me and uh, uh like over those over the next few years and you know just as as luck would have it of all the cities i obviously lived in pune for some time yeah. and then i moved to bombay but uh, um for me um everything else is like i uh, always feel i'm a fugitive i like i'm a delhi fugitive yeah so that's kind of like an auto sort of layer from which from from where other things have been achieved like it's always been a sense of like uh that i'm uh, freeing myself or liberating myself yeah. constantly like even in my even in my reclaiming of my own identity even in the stories that i have psychologically i'm always like liberating myself from what happened to me in the first 26 years of my life in delhi so yeah. for me that that is a very significant experience now not so much about dissing it but to just literally look at my own brain trying to come to terms with it and like looking from an outer brain and understanding these processes as a third person yeah. and finally finding some kind of this negotiation has largely been a very strong driving force this is my voice this that largely became a voice this is what i feel attracted to as two subjects this is where i find my angst from this is my driving force so it in that sense in that moment i did not know uh but now 10 years or 15 years or 14 years away from that place in time you know what what how you had to travel and what you had to make yeah. of this uh so you know i i connect with this a lot actually uh, when you talk about delhi because i am also from uh, ncr mostly so like you know when you're in bombay it's like it's relatively safer like you you go out with your partner like if i'm going like, out like late at night and stuff i'm always like walking with her on the side of the road because i am always that that thing it doesn't happen that much in bombay like nothing sort of heckling even late at night no. doesn't happen but it's so psychological it's always there like if something will happen if like an auto bumps into an auto i am always thinking yo this doesn't should yeah. lead to a fight so that's yeah. the imprint i think people who are from delhi have always have that some violence it, is always going to happen it is that's the right word there's uh, there's a lot of violence and there is also psychological violence it's uh, if people even if there is always a threat and yeah. you're constantly negotiating with that sort of threat uh, like the minute you enter delhi uh, um from the time the like i'm uh, this is not hierarchical in that sense i'm not like um punching down when i say this like that that my uber driver yeah. uh, c- cannot desire me uh, hmm. it's not coming from that place it's just yeah. that that this is you know how i feel unsafe yeah uh, you know? and feel unsafe on reasons you know why is like sometimes i see this in men in delhi in whichever hierarchical position they may be like whichever social uh, socio economic space they may be operating from and ser- serving that moment in time but they, i know wherever they may be they just find it very difficult to negotiate with a woman who is short haired who is educated yeah. who earns her own money um and who speaks uh and who will verbalize herself clearly in yeah. both hindi and english 
सो ये जो पढ़ाई लिखाई है ना ये रियली इज समथिंग दैट रियली पिसेस देम ऑफ एंड आई सेंस इट आई सेंस इट लाइक मोर देन इट्स नॉट सो मच अबाउट इफ आई वर जस्ट इफ आई वर जस्ट लाइक that and they also categorize women like they so my type is the kind which is the most detest 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 mm. uh and because i represent everything that they are not mm. uh, and so i am the i am the biggest uh threat uh mm. like my and so for me uh, i constantly negotiate with my safety i yeah. try not to over talk i try to uh, choose a moment uh, even in negotiations that i have even in the car like i will always try to keep negotiating so because i'm literally choosing my safety because i'm like yeah. i don't want to over engage neither do i want to piss off i want to reach home safe like yeah. intact Yeah. Uh, so you know, so largely that, but in these negotiations, like uh, there was a time when people could say, "Oh, how, how pathetic," or like, "I, you know, I'm beyond that." Like this is now we are doing something else. We're basically surviving, and we're chronicling that. And uh, I've reached to to intellectualize it. I think it will be another decade of my life. I I've often talked about it that how for me right now this is that phase where I need to capture it. I need to capture anger first for me to even respond on uh, on it academically. Like maybe that that work is going to happen a little later. Right now, where we are at, I need to I need to first find a place for for just the fact that there is so much pushback. Yeah. Uh, you know, and uh, so for me, largely this these are like some of the areas that. that are that are not favored by choice mm. uh because i think they are just preoccupations yes and because they are gender preoccupations and it's mm. all this is like uh, of course there is there is so much story there is so much material in the, in there and it's so so relevant at the moment that i just feel actually i just i belong there so so delhi journalism other things and then all of it leading to film school and then taking that chance because you were ready for it because there was not much to lose you came to bomb you i came to bomb with 5000 rupees in my bank and everything like i, I was like i literally lived a life of loan for the first few years i, I mean i i did whatever i did to, to to survive and all of this hustle accidentally like you know how things lead to like my first project was with uh, yash raj which yeah. which is a show called rishta.com on which i'm mm. Uh, yeah. four episodes uh which is which was a, and it like i wrote it and within one year it got shot and released like in mm. 2010 it 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 gave me an early start like it just ha- i had like a credit from which i could like again like struggle for the struggle for mm. struggle for the. actually if i look back now and i as i i try to like string it together all my released work or unreleased work or whatever all the work came from like every project came from a prior project hmm. like it was literal a birth or uh, of the next kind of project voice even the chance meetings that happened around that project so it was literally just this idea that you're kind of like uh, carving in the dark hmm. and then you're like finding some kind of like a shape to what what's happening but most of it was not planned there was no there was because what what plan like this there was there is look, look, there is an industry like a sense of like you know um uh, some kind of like a organized way of operations yeah. now the yeah. last few years but when i began it was very anarchic like it was like literally jungle hmm. so kuch bhi hota tha and there was just too much gatekeeping and there were too many uh there were too many clouds and it mm. was impossible to get inside and so within that finding your voice on the margins and like and just hoping that so you know so some of yeah. it uh, has kind of fallen in place um uh, i mean the only thing sometimes i say to please myself is that i did screenwriting when it was not fashionable mm. 
I became a screenwriter when it was not trending. It was not lucrative to be in this business. There were no opportunities. So that's what, like maybe at this moment, I'm, I have the advantage of an early start. That's all. Uh, I think I want to speak about uh, Agra. When you're like talking about violence and seeing violence in Delhi and violence in men, and Agra is a story about this sexually repressed man, yeah. uh, Guru is a call center employee. I want to know you as a writer, you served as a co-writer. Where do you fall in all this? Like, what exactly was your contribution to Kanu and to understand this character? Because was it just a female gaze thing or was it like something else was also? Uh, like when you wrote this project? I know that in the interviews, he has uh, very graciously acknowledged my feminine gaze on yeah. all characters, etc. Yeah. Uh, et I mean, I would like to believe that I did bring uh, something to the narrative and the structure. Uh, uh, and I think we had a crazy first 14 months of writing this together because this was a very difficult film to write and find. It took seven years. Like It took seven um, years to finally make the film. Yeah. Uh, uh, we, I mean, I was with him for the first two years and then he was okay. on his own. And then he went, went did, a, did many passes uh, along the way and then um, I, I know that when he was shooting the film he sent me the shooting draft so he had done some bit of the work on his own because I couldn't obviously have also this was a project on which there was I mean there was no money and no yeah. and there was no contract and it was literally our labor of love in that sense yeah. and um, um, the, there was of course it wasn't that it was easy for Kanu either it wasn't like he was swindling me on it it was it was what what it was i i mean who he when i met kanu he it, it was just it was just after titli had like gone to can it was yeah so that and uh, uh and he had so much you know he had that hunger and he had so much to say and and titli is one of my most favorite films so yes, yes. Titli, i yeah. think i am a fan of titli even now like i'm not so much of a fan of can i say it with with extreme respect but i'm not that much of a fan of either agra or Kanu, but i'm yeah. a big fan of Kanu. yes and uh so because for me films are always bigger than people uh, yeah i'm just that you know and so anyway so for me i i still for me he was the person who birthed titli and uh, it was very important to work with him like it was it was like an opportunity that could have only come in a once in a life, lifetime and it as I, as we look back, it it may have because I mean, finally, when the film has gone to Cannes after seven years, it's a, such a sweet closure. Um, and uh, this was something so this is something so surreal. Like he, I'm sure, in his heart, always hoped for this, uh, because I know that he believes in his talent. I kind of somewhere gave up because I knew it was taking so long, and it was such a difficult one because the film just kept refining its voice and refining its legs. And uh, so, so my contribution in that sense, I think definitely if there's one thing he def like, I think the idea of uh, correlating uh, space and sexuality for somewhere mm. we kind of like we we kind of arrived at together, mm. and uh, and also there was the the fact that we had we knew that this guy is going to be sexually perverted, and uh, we were gonna deal with an area like that. So after that, a lot of the female agency that was to be uh, mm. used as a foil against someone yeah. who's going to be like this and obviously will he will actually be the hero he'll actually yeah. win and the film is actually going to see and in a sort of slightly sardonic and mm. uh, satirical way we're kind of saying that a fuck up like this is going to basically win the world mm. and that's that's kind of like a statement on where the world is at and uh, to do that, we had to also like look at the women who are who are to give them the dignity and the sense of feistiness, but also keep it keeping it real. We had to give them a lot of agency. Like, what could they do to a man like this, or how will they negotiate hmm. a man like this, keeping their own interests intact? Because these women are also living in a world where it's if they wouldn't be watchful, they'll also be wiped out. Yeah. So I think somewhere to understand that these women understood those um, the recesses of 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 uh, patriarchy and to 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 exercise patriarchy themselves if they have yeah. to to stay afloat 
so this, this and how to not make how to not make it plotty but how to also not make it super academic and how to find a way in between so somewhere like that and there were many drafts like i remember i wrote draft one i wrote draft three hmm. uh draft two hmm. uh and so were you guys like revising each other's drafts was it like that like he wrote we, i think the first three drafts we were just like finding the story like it was really okay. like structurally we kind of like pinning it down to i think by draft three we had kind of pinned it down to this will be the this will be act one act two act three hmm. and uh, with some credit to me i mean i think even now those that structure is as is hmm. everything else that has happened around it in terms of negotiating of like refining or fine-tuning the narrative or finding uh, set pieces which are like right now will be talked about as everyone else yeah. will see the film I don't know if you have but like the set pieces which are very like mm. out there uh, mm. and very wide or like have a very surreal quality to them like uh, yeah. so uh, those are some things uh, which over the over a period of time he has added mm. uh, so but you know like that's anyway like as a director he's the kind of director who improvises a lot as he mm. goes along even if he he would have like rewritten his own screenplay 15 times over before he would have shot the scene so he's somebody who anyway doesn't really follow the script like if there were di- if there were many dialogues anyway like written down he won't really follow the dialogue flow yeah. whilst arriving at the same scene that's on paper so that's anyway his shooting style and um, the, so so these were the things so there was of course like looking back i feel um the, there was so much to learn from it like so much to learn from kanu so much to learn from agra um and i'm so very very happy that the film has gone to can and got its due finally uh atika i want to get a little technical here i am going to talk about ulaj uh, which is a film that is revolving around the life of Indian Foreign Services, a patriotic thriller that has, it has been described as. Uh, when, like, you are the dialogue writer of the film, when do you write a dialogue of, like, a world of, of like, people from a world you don't know about? Uh, maybe, like, you you go and research about it. It doesn't come very naturally. Like, diplomats stuff. How do you make it natural? Like, what are, what is, what, what goes in the research when you go about these people which is not like related to your life. Like, how do you find that sweet spot where you know exactly what oh, these people might talk like this? Because dialogue writing is a lot of like like a tennis match. You know, like it has to, somebody has to say something, other person has to say that. But yeah. it has to have that natural sound to it. How do you arrive at that? I think the key is to arrive at the inner humanity of your character. Uh, everything else that they do, of course, of course, it takes some research to find out what will be the everyday challenges of a 30-year-old or a 28-year-old life. Uh, but uh, under that guise, there will be a human being and she'll be formed of a certain kind of childhood, a certain kind of uh, socioeconomic experience, a certain kind of... Uh, privilege or lack of it sort of like a positioning um, and also like certain unique experiences that will make her prime for making certain mistakes right like or, or lapses or, yeah. or or she will have unique blind spots but mm. they may be conflating to her identity as an IFS officer mm. but she could be a doctor and she could still be this human yeah. being so you look you at know, the so- character as a person first that's what it is. We oh, have yeah. to find every character's humanity first. Like it, okay. it is a combination of things. Sometimes even a like the reason why a certain um, uh, professional position is the a certain professional position or hierarchy is maintained or like upheld or uh, or 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 uh, sort of fought over is also coming from something else. But we have to understand what is that need. And that's, we have to dissect the human first. So the dialogues are literally, what is dialogue writing? In my head, dialogue writing is actually getting under the skin of the scene, which is basically, I don't write dialogues outside of screenplay. It's like 
स्क्रीन प्ले के पेट से डायलॉग निकलता है I not be, I'm not, I'm not anyway that kind of a dialogue writer. Like I, I, I am not, I am not the type of dialogue writer you will employ if you want to do like, for example, a vernacular pass pass on hmm. on a script. Like I am okay. not the type of writer you will be hired. No one is going to hire me to write Rajasthani. Like you know, yeah. that that's not going to happen. I'm not anyway that writer. I am a screenplay writer. Hmm. There is a reason. If anything, my vernacular. If if anything, I do bring to a to an to a character is i think i bring some sensitivity and awareness uh, as as a woman hmm. uh, so for me i when i make those changes it can't just be at the dialogue level right i will make those changes within the scene design okay i will i will make structural changes i will i will obviously make additional screenplay changes to bring certain characters a certain kind of lensing and voice so of course that will always entail additional screenplay work i sometimes i don't fight for those credits i mean if someone is generous enough they can give it and but i think by this time i'm not hungry for minor credits like those anyway like i i, I just let it be so for me of course i mean and most of at this moment people i'm working with are very like i think they're working with a very smart bunch so mm. um, everyone knows what's really going on i'm brought in for us and you know the credit division is like a little like it's okay in india i say ab credit dete hain ki ye ab tum third writer aaye ho to tum dialogue le lo types but karna is it, is it still time. tough like to credit lena like because a lot of scene writers say ki yaar credit ka bahut zyada problem negotiating koi matter ye ho gaya ki at least for me now i'm eight credits old on on i'm dini so itna mushkil nahi hai like if i really put my foot down i i i should be able to it's not that tough for hmm. me personally but it is tough for people like there's still like genuinely like that kind of invisibilizing happens sometimes you're credited for its own sake because hmm. it it's it's legal and then you you know writers are still like kind of like neglected to yeah. its to its that's okay like i i mean we recognize this of course it like used to make me really really angry earlier now i just don't get into those kind of uh, i don't spend too much time dwelling on it like i i i've reached just maybe it's just that point in experience where you want to focus more on solutions mm. and not so much problems because we've understood that it's a very exploitative structure which is uh, not in favor of writers like it's designed in a way which which is that it's in fact the only thing the most uh, amazing thing that could have happened to writers is that they with the with, with the coming of ott industry so there are there are there's a plethora of opportunity out there and there's there in the infinite number of like development cells happen in in all over bombay right now so of course there's employment for everyone and there is if, if you know if you you don't really have to do the traditional things of like of of getting a credit out there you can you can write a show shoot it and like put it on youtube and you will be a viral rage and then an ott will come after you and want to acquire your show and put it on their ott mm. so that stuff has already happened yeah. and so you know times have changed and people If you claim your power, like you can be the king. So that kind of, this is this is beautiful. This has kind of like made everyone rethink the game, and uh, that this was so necessary. So for me, quietly as I'm look, I am still holding that small position on the margin. I don't have aims to like really mainstream my margin. I'm very safe and uh, uh, very. cautious of like overdoing or underdoing anything i am going at my own speed doing my own thing and uh, building my momentum for for you know slightly bigger roles more creative stronger roles from here on so uh, but i'm very happy for for the younger lot of writers getting getting their due it is tough it is the under under you know mm. there is a lot jhol all the time happening but i i would i wish we didn't have i didn't have to say uh, be smart about it hmm. but 
but one has to be right like you know you will have to be resourceful you have to be smart you will have to because no one is coming to help you like of course there are systems in place but thoda khayal khud rakhna padta hai so but uh, i want to know why is that why is always ki writing writers ko hi credit nahi dena hota ya you know like writers ki hi sabse pehle fees mari jati hai kabhi kuch hota hai like but why why is this like i just want to know your opinion ki why is it like we earlier didn't used to value writing that much but now we do uh now yeah. like there is, but now we do but still there are like problems and still like this thing of how creative development happens it's what okay. happens is by the distance from the time the project begins which is which it always starts with the writer right and the writer is the most crucial and important person at the beginning of the project but by the time the project gets made hmm. it's a, it's it's like a love story you've forgotten like if you're okay. the director you know it's it's like it's so long because by the time you actually take a project into production then there are too many other partners like in the in the game yeah, and, yeah. and and so it just it obviously a good director mm-hmm. or a good writer director will never de recognize the work of their principal collaborators because they know they couldn't have got come as far but sometimes what happens is projects are too like you know they're too prolonged and protracted in time and many sometimes it's like a game of like literally a relay exchange between many voices many hands and so some writers get left behind mm-hmm. these are literally those some so some projects are obviously guilty of this sort of like you know credit division where some it's a little crazy in the beginning the development work by itself is very confusing and that ambiguity kind of like leaves gray room for if it kind of like makes someone like if someone were opportunistic by nature hmm. the nature the, this the gray areas allow that grayness to thrive you know what i'm hmm. saying yeah. it's so like always it's always very wishy washy it's always like according to someone else's version of what had really happened in a in a room between two writers or two one yeah. writer director yeah just, just you know because in when you come to that point when you have a bound script and then you have actors and a dop and an editor these are very tangible uh, positions and also they're happening in a very neat period of time like the reason why no one like messes around with dops is hmm. because uh, you know you really they run the set yeah they're part and, of the process yeah Huh. Yes, and it's like forty-five days. You have to be on the set, and they come in and they get out, and that's it. It's a, it's that moment in time. So you, how will you like? You can't mess around with that process. But with writers, it's not the same. It's a longer process of like, um, you know, birthing a child literally hmm. together, and uh, in in that like, oh, I I guess it's it's. what i'm trying to get to as get to is that when you ask why does it happen to writers i guess it's just that it is easy to mess around with something that is slightly amorphous or you know like uh, intangible in nature who is said it only what? a credit thing your compensation is also an issue like money is not being paid or like delayed payments and stuff delayed payments are part of the process Uh, okay. but uh, now it's not that bad like there was a time when you would get no matter what you would get swindled now it's mm. not like that if in most uh, most production houses ensure that uh, they are they're very clear uh, with the communication for example if things are not working out with a certain writer mm. they're very quick to tell you that you should stop work and development mm. pay you hmm. till that certain milestone the contract work is like much more hmm. uh, organized it's vetted by lawyers the writers obviously have become very cognizant of these things we reached like thanks to the contributions of swa hmm. and like other bodies and a number of development like it's there's so much work that of course that kind of uh you know legal is is like a part of regular part of our or of our work culture at the moment which was even till 5 years ago something like if you would bring up for example credit remuneration etc right at the top of a project with a filmmaker mm. they would get upset they would like okay. say oh 
यू नो तुम क्रिएटिव नहीं हो तुम आर्टिस्टिक नहीं हो तुम्हारा एम पिक्चर बनाना नहीं है एंड नाउ आई वुड आई फाइंड दैट वेरी नाउ इट्स नॉट लाइक इट्स नॉट कंसिडर्ड लाइक एज एफ आई एम लेस टैलेंटेड एज एफ आई एम लाइक आफ्टर रॉक थिंग्स यू नो सो इट्स नो वन कैन गिल्ट गिल्ट मी और शेम मी फॉर लाइक ब्रिंगिंग दीज थिंग्स अप राइट top of the project mm. uh this is a shift this is a shift because earlier it used to be like how can we even how, like you know if like let's say a very big filmmaker has approached me in mm. a party mm. they have said to play a dick do it's literally like kaam chalu ho jayega and there is no contract there is no money <laughs> and we are doing this because i'm like how can i like how can i bring up money mm. to that director mm. but uh matlab it's very simple you need to Oh. uh and uh, you must because then you are also setting like bad practices as a standard and you are also destroying other people's uh, market like maybe i'm i'm a rich writer i'm not i'm talking just gently as an example <laughs> if i were and i could i didn't have to really depend on someone's salary or like a uh, 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 like a fee uh, hmm. and i i just wanted to collaborate with a certain filmmaker and i could do for work for free what i still i'm still like taking away from the opportunities that my comrades are like being stolen off when i do something like this uh you know when wga goes on a strike every yeah. writer goes on a strike yeah. and that's that sense of bonding and community which in in, in india we are going to take it's going to take many years to get there i have a, <laughs> i doubt it will we'll get there so is it not is it not a united front like like how wga is itna nahi really like it's everyone's doing their own thing on the side and it's still like it's still considered like slightly oh aap activist hain aap oh. aap dispute committee chalati hain <laughs> aap you know so you're be still like yeah. called out as a proper trouble maker you're still like after the profits have you lost uh, any project so, ever because you were political on twitter or kahin pe bhi i i may have got less work because of that okay uh i mean there was of, of course a time when i was extremely uh you know vocal on on twitter yeah. uh, uh but i i what i didn't lose any project but i may have uh, got less work because okay. of that. like i that may have happened i mean the thankfully even after that touch would i have had enough work, so <laughs> so maybe it's just the i don't think it's because of me i think it's just that moment in time that we found ourselves in where there's so much work that even after less mm. uh less calls i still have enough to pay my bills when it comes to like olaj's uh, like it's a patriotic film kabhi aisa hota hai kya yaar ki like the director or anybody asks you ki maybe this should have more chest thumping dialogues this should have dialogues which is more nationalistic because that's what sells that's what like shows in the trailer like are you being asked not at least i i wouldn't be i i i don't think i should talk more about this film before my yeah. director speaks about this film or my producer speaks about the film there are other stakeholders there there is yeah. so i i have no right to confidence to breach confidentiality on certain aspects of script yeah. i will just give quickly remark on the fact that not on this film this film and this but film but are there like, other films like where you are asked to like write something like not like not this one but yeah. are there other yeah. like are you being asked yeah. to you know like make yes, this dialogue yes. to be more national yes I, i i had to let go of a project which i, I thought i was very gung ho about but mm-hmm. and it was also something uh, which which sort of like uh, covered areas which required us to comment on trans border politics okay. Okay. uh and uh, it became extremely uncomfortable for me because after the first few drafts uh, uh, the brief kind of like hinted at uh making the film more nationalistic and i was extremely uncomfortable with that so uh i was i couldn't i don't know maybe it was a case of bad communication because i i look i know that the i know the intentions were the, the largely producers with good intentions hmm. but somewhere my, i think my personal politics was a deep conflict with the brief that suddenly was sprung at me uh because i was very confused because i couldn't common sensically kind of process what happened with the changing of the brief because i was like i'm not that writer like mm. you know me and these yeah. people know me like for many years they they were my literally kind of my colleagues and friends 
so i was very surprised because i was like i don't understand like you know that's not my politics like forget about the merit of my screen writing like for about the forget about the aptitude you know i'm not that writer like i i am an idealist otherwise i would be very very rich by this time hmm. and i obviously will not even take this project in the first place if i wasn't an idealist because hmm. i want to work with certain kind of people and i want to not just certain kind of projects now in this situation it, it really was like very confusing and i think it was that moment in time when everyone was confused not hmm. that things i mean but it was that year also covid had happened and like you know first wave second wave and then the things were very rough politically in india mm. and like bollywood was certainly like suddenly at at the direct fire line you know like it was yeah. it was crazy so i think everyone was also very scared of taking certain chances and they wanted to project themselves as um, yeah so these kind of things have happened in the past it it i think it was a phase beach mein Mm. and then now again i feel like people are kind of like regaining their senses like everyone is like calm down and people now are not they then they, they're handling this better i think yeah. pathan handled this really yeah. well you know so after that some there are now there are paths laid out for mm. you to know that you how you can still like i am i've written to uluch Uh, yeah. knowing very well what i'm doing like uh, it, of course so just because i'm like uh, you know it doesn't mean that i want india to lose just because yeah. i'm like uh, secular yeah. in it it doesn't mean i want india to lose or pakistan to win it obviously yeah. doesn't mean that it's yeah. like my nationalism but my nationalism does not itself lend to yeah. being a jingo like i'm not after pakistan's blood there's hmm. a difference so this is all we are like add where actually we and ulaj politics in that sense is really really clear hmm. uh yeah. the idea that someone can be a patriot while understanding how we are all uh like puppets to a a bigger game that's beyond our comprehension yeah. uh, you know national politics and state politics and uh, geo geo you know sort of a geopolitical situation of or what south asia is it's yeah. it's 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 beyond just like a man to man or woman to woman you know it's it's there's yeah. something bigger at work here so somewhere without making it highly academic the film politics comes from a space like that it's a little more complex uh, so that those things were they were very clear i worked with a set of people who like parvez the original scra- original draft yeah. comes from sheik and he is he's a writer of bajrangi bhaijan so you can imagine that yeah. there's certain there's certain things that were taken care of uh, i think you're talking about not uh, i read it's like a relationship drama and it's about this australian couple who have certain sort of tips uh, what can you tell us about it no spoilers okay uh, yes it does like um len takes takes its takes a lot of the story meat from also being an immigrant couple okay. uh, uh so uh and then the, the, it, there's there's something really interesting that happens between the two of them and how their relationship is at threat uh and the whole film is about negotiating a new space or redefining what this relationship could be uh so the main stay of the story is literally or the screenplay or the film is largely about renegotiating a relationship like or to or, or or an attempt in an attempt to save it uh something else comes out so it's it's something like that but um very satisfying experience as a screenwriter on that like very proud of that film can't wait for the world to see it it's short already it's in post i've seen the first cut it's looking really good i think i now want to get into a little very writerly uh, territory uh, i want to know like personally where do your ideas come from like do ideas come from your own life or is it like you read something and you think oh this might be you read a short story and you think oh this might make a great screenplay or like Where do you do you fetch for ideas? Like, do you every morning wake up and think, "Yo, I should have something to write about"? How is this whole ideating process of a student? I just live deeply. I just okay. live deeply. I live deeply. I read a lot. Um, 
and I keep my eyes and ears open and I'm generally a curious person. Uh, as I'm aging, becoming less prone to judgment and more to curiosity. I'm, every time I see something around me, I'm more curious about how we arrived at where we are at um, instead of like making severe judgments. This obviously hasn't come easy, but with time. And I think that's exactly what I do in my story also. Like I'm mostly examining things. Um, so for me, it's the same. I'm, I'm it's Somewhere it's my personality that's kind of driving this. So when you say, what are my processes? I'm, yeah, I'm like, I mean, it's it goes with it comes with the territory. Like I obviously um, educate myself. I read yeah. a lot. I I work to keep myself updated with what's going on around me. Um, I take keen interest in in sometimes when I when I hear things that are very off colored or uh, especially like astoundingly sexist remarks mm. from our administrators, leaders. Um, I take keen interest in kind of like imagining a certain kind of uh, uh, history or where they come from. So I sometimes like go back and understand why do they say this? Like more than yeah. just getting angry, of course, yeah. we are all angry. That anger is always a sign that there's more to this. Yeah. Uh, so just like this, just living a life where I'm like unpacking the world around me constantly. And like do what whatever it takes to like for example I'm um like I take keen interest in art and history mm. these are the these are things that really nurture me like I I know what's happening in the art scene in India I keep myself really updated uh, I mean it's also was my one of my first yeah yeah you know line of work so it's never really left me and it's something that I keenly follow. Uh, keenly understand visual, uh, visually how certain kind of like trauma is imagined by contemporary painters. Um, how uh, how how are historians kind of expressing their concerns and the kind of uh, uh, books that they're writing? Uh, what is the narrative that basically the world is kind of gravitating towards? So of course it requires me to read a lot, uh, and then like also then unlearn it and then try to understand this how it's kind of like make making an impact in one person's life. Yeah. How all of this is making an impact in one person's life and how it may not be directly related, but how everything is interrelated actually in the world right now. And uh, so looking at that kind of like micro and macro sort of division of the world in all time, at all times, in all we do, in all that we do and possibly. So... Yeah, that's everything everywhere all at once, sort of like a philosophical position. And then, are you a daily you writer? Get, like, do you like write daily? Is it a daily, I'm a thing daily or do writer you... when it's my deadlines that beset me? <laughs> uh, then you end up writing daily. If I if, if it was my bus, I would have to write But <laughs> the kind of deadlines are so stringent. Rehte hai. And because uh, you run a livelihood around this and uh, you also live to service a career, right? Like yeah. So so I think those things make you mature and like clear-headed and uh, you end up finishing your work in time. Is, is it just a project thing like you're working on a project or you write for pleasure also? Like maybe you write something else, you write a short story or a poem or is it mostly a project? At this moment, no, I'm just actually just... I, I there's a dry answer to this at this moment yeah. I'm only focused on meeting my uh, commitments uh, there is has been no bandwidth to yeah. to create anything outside of this I have my own stories to screenplay and I have had no bandwidth in fact that's one of my goals for the coming year which is that you know somewhere like between the next six eight months I have to find a window where I take a month off from the market work and just like dedicate myself to writing my own screenplay. I have no time. And I'm also so burnt out from time mm. to time. That actually the time that I have, I I want to read. If there's anything I want to do for my brain, like I want to like nourish, mm. nourish it with things. So I end up like doing like even sometimes three times a week, I sit down and I've given myself a timetable of reading 45 minutes daily. Like I time it. You sit down and you still your brain by reading something for 45 minutes every day. I can't, I'm unable to do that. But 
on most days like on at least two or three times a day i'll sit down with a book i'll i'll see to it the time it I'll, that i'll write 20 pages it's literally like giving your brain some yeah. workout right and is there a particular like, genre you like uh, when it comes to books uh, like what what do you read right now i'm reading tomorrow and tomorrow and tomorrow and i'm okay. loving it so i i think i'm what do i read i love reading fiction Huh. But what sort of fiction? Like, is it a crime thriller or like a like some other story or a you know a love story or like an historical fiction? Is there a particular genre which you uh, gravitate towards? Like, which you like constantly? You have to anything with like uh, intense character building is something I I crave. Like, I I know that yeah. it's my kind of book. Like, but I also love. Uh, historical uh, dramas like that's also something that I've lately been gravitating towards like I I, I loved the luminaries uh, okay. I know it's such a boring book and it's unending and whatever but I, I mean I like the scope of mm. something like that uh, one book that I loved reading which is like a strange hybrid and you can't really categorize it actually you can uh, is uh, Cloud Atlas oh, okay okay Okay, ah. I love that book, and um, then I saw the adaptation. It it was crazy. It was a beautiful adaptation, but I can't tell you what Cloud Atlas did to me. Like it was just that that moment in time, like two months of my life, and it. So yeah, so something like that. If and if you think about it, uh, the core of Cloud Atlas is so spiritual. And it's also so deep and romantic and like, uh, but from the outside, it's a hybrid of many genres. It's a science fiction, yeah. but it's also like a hybrid of many genres. So it's, it's, it's something that I, I, I have like an aspiration for, like, uh, that's, that's where I, I want to be at. Like the, you know, everything, everywhere, all at once has been my, one of my most favorite films because it kind of like yeah. resembles yeah. this film. And where you actually using the genre, but then you're telling inside of it, you're actually telling a very basic story of of someone uh, crying for help, mm. or someone like crying yeah. for humanity, or someone like crying for um uh, for a need of intimacy and connection. It's basically a mother daughter story. If you like uh, everything, everything all at once is at yeah. the core of it. That's what it is. Like, yes. Everything yes. else, all the action, everything's just. Uh, Absolutely. Like, yes. it, yeah. is, it is the documents. Yeah. Do screenwriting books help though? Like do like because there's a lot of debate everything, about it. Everything helps and then nothing does. Okay. Everything helps. Like, yes, these are necessary things to do. I wouldn't like really dismiss them. Hmm. Uh, you know, but they only help as much. Hmm. Eight point ke baad, you will have to do it on your own. Uh and it's like really the, the cleanest example which I often give is this. Um, you can read many books on driving. Yeah. But you will not be able to drive till you drive. Yeah. Uh, you, will, you can watch the n- number of shows on cooking and mm. you, can, you can read many books on cooking. But you'll never be able to cook till you actually cook. Mm. And you will be able to even grasp more from mm. cooking books or cooking shows only if you know how to cook or you attempt to cook every day. So yeah. the answer lies in the practice itself. If you practice, you would know what to take from the books, what films to watch, how to see films, how to read screenplays. You would know. If you don't do the practice, you can't automatically expect that, okay, I've done a screenwriting program, now I'll become a screenwriter. That's not how it's going to happen. You have to engage in the action and then arrive at, okay, I am now getting stuck. What is it that I'm not able to learn? So it's a very like, it's a practice. It's a riyaz. If you mm. do it, you will get better at it. It's a muscle. The more you will mm. do it, the better you will get at it. Nobody gets there on, in one day. Like some people are a natural, but it doesn't like... So it's it's better to go slow and like steady and like put in a certain amount of concerted work in it. Like that's that is what's going to help you over the years. It's something that your brain will develop a 
मसल पॉप ओवर पीरियड टाइम बट यू हैव टू डू इट रेगुलरली एंड फ्रीक्वेंटली व्हाट इज योर लाइक एडवाइस टू लाइक यंग स्क्रीन राइटर्स हु आर जस्ट लाइक स्टार्टिंग एंड यू नो नेविगेटिंग द होल इंडस्ट्री एंड स्टफ लाइक व्हाट इज समथिंग लाइक यू हैव लर्न ओवर योर जर्नी व्हिच आई थिंक एवरी यंग स्क्रीन राइटर शुड आई i have a like a rehearsed answer for this so okay. i am do that but i always tell my uh, young uh, colleagues younger peers mm-hmm. to to make themselves um be ready to create gender sensitivity and other sensitivities Hmm. at on the go okay. while you are writing like a political thriller or you are writing a, a horror slasher or hmm. don't whatever genre you may be committed to hmm. can you be sure that every scene that you write is hmm. gender sensitive even when it's not about women hmm. can you please ensure that every if, like can you please bring some kindness and empathy to the world constantly by first allowing yourself also to 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 be aware of it like can you please take effort hmm. to bring awareness to not just it's not just politics can you be a can you hmm. please take that kind of like effort to make sure that every scene that is not about a certain political agenda or a game can still have a certain gaze which can be protective of or sensitive to everyone else and that's the kind of effort i always like literally plead everyone to bring into any project that they're doing because actually a cumulative effect of all of this will be a better better india like because the the way people learn from popular cinema or popular you know mm. uh, sort of uh, cultural uh, uh, sort of things uh the, like advertising for example people learn from what happens in ads people learn from what happens in films people learn from how their he, print, mm. favorite heroes and friends behave yeah. learn people learn from their favorite content makers yeah people learn you know so for, for me i feel that everybody is indebted right now to to workshop themselves into these sensitivities and it will automatically emanate in their work while they do other things they can they can create the genres they like to ensure that everything kind of like reads the room right and like so the by the by default you're constantly uh you know teaching or learning or engaging and doing the right things you're not toxic so detoxify like detox apna first apna brain and then yeah. if you write from that brain it will automatically kind of like spill into your writing so this is what i tell i think that's all that i tell writers to take cognizance of and take charge of because you guys you guys are like and especially the younger lot like you will take you are the yeah. ones who are like take the world forward and uh, so outside of that yeah i mean otherwise everyone is just they know their game they don't need advice from me so. <laughs> on that note uh, thank you thank you so much uh, atika for speaking to me it was such a great uh, conversation the best of luck for thank all you. your upcoming projects thank you thank you sir thank you karthik